Uh, welcome you all to uh, Success Complex PCI 2021. It's, uh, make it simple technical forum A to Z. Uh, we're gonna start a live case session, short ones, uh, uh, live cases from Asam Medical Center, Korea. I am happy to have uh, Dr. Ku Bong uh, co moderator, uh, Seoul National University from Korea. I will uh, introduce uh, the distinguished panel first for the session, right? Dr. Gu? Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Park, uh, and welcome again. So that the, we have uh, in, we have invited uh, experts for this PCI session, and mm -hmm. the, I'd like to introduce uh, Pandra Ko from India, Dr. Sumo Ho from Korea, and Dr. Fahim Haider Jaffari from Singapore, and Dr. Michael Kangin Lee from Hong Kong, and Dr. Yoshino Kumurasato from Japan, and Dr. Chung Yang Chan from Taiwan. Great, great, right. So, all right, so uh, we are ready. Dr. Han, can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Would you show us the case presentation and introduction you, you know, colleagues first? Okay. This is Dr. Lee, my colleague. Dr. Lee, could you introduce the patient brief history? Okay, I'm very honored to present this case. Uh, this patient is 74 years old male. He had a history of PCI at uh, 8 years old, full stable angina. He has visited our opinion clinic for regular routine follow-up, and he had a positive result of a treadmill test, at stage 2, with symptoms. Uh, Korean genome showed the patient previous stand, but the stenosis at this left main and proximal RAD. His, his uh, CV medical history is 80 years ago, proximal LED, treated with DES. Next, please. And you know, he had no uh, smoker and have a familiar history. Next slide. Chest X ray showed the uh, 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 cardiac size is okay. Next slide. EK showed the normal science rhythm. And next slide. This is the exercise treatment test. Uh, you can show the you can you can see the uh, V3, V2, V3 to V6 extensive anterior wall ST depression and have an elevation on a, uh, AVR lead. Next slide. And uh, uh, echocardiograph showed normal uh, systolic function without uh, reasonable abnormality. Next slide. This is the uh, ICA view. Proximal region is tubular stenosis, but FFR is. Uh, uh, 0 0.95. Next slide. Well, this is the left coronary angiograph. Uh, you can see the previous stand is patent, but the proximal uh, uh, distal left main has a, a, st uh, a st uh, diffuse stenosis, so we perform the FFR. Next slide. This is the, the right side is the FFR of this patient, and the 0 0.77, and the uh, distal stand portion is 0 0.82. So, next slide. We prepare the IBUS uh, and we target is left main. Next slide. So, Professor Dr. Han, uh, yes. can, can you continue? You, uh, thank you very much for a very nice introduction. Could you, uh, do you have any co uh, question or comment on patient? Would you show us uh, angiogram first? Yeah. All right, you, you took an angel, right? Um, this is wire only, and so we. All right, great, great, great. So, <clears throat> circumflex artery is a separate one, right? Yeah, right. All right, so this is basically uh, LED disease, LED and a combined uh, big gamma branches. However, uh, angiographically, it looks like uh, it's a main disease, something. Picture here. Great. So, any suggestion and discussion point from panel? So, Dr. 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 Professor Bach just mentioned that the the patient have a separate circumflex. Is circumflex big? It seems that the PL branch is big. That the circumflex might be relatively small. P uh, circumflex is very small. I can show mm -hmm. you the circumflex test. All right. Test. Ready? Ready. This is so complex. Okay, oh, see, now small, we see. Right? Yeah. Very small. Mm. 
So the, this patient is very interesting. The FFR value, uh, patient symptom for chest pain, the FFR value is 0 0.77 at the distal LED. Mm -hmm. And there is two tandem region, uh, distal to the stand and left main to proximal region. Mm -hmm. Then another interesting point is the treadmill test. Could you show us the baseline EKG? Baseline EKG, mild ST change in the lateral lead, but uh, not LVH, but next, please. Mm -hmm. This is a treadmill test. Strong Sta positive. Yeah, stage two, very strong positive. Yes, strong positive. Right, very uh, large area CBO ischemia. Yeah. And could you show us the coronary angiogram again? Yes, it, it, by angiographically, intrastent looks fine. Mm -hmm. So stenosis is inter, looks intermediate in the left main to proximal AD and distal mm -hmm. stent. So the how to treat this patient? Uh, you <clears throat> concerned about the tandem, you know, legion yeah, from yeah, uh, right. proximal to distal right. Limit, right? Yeah. So FFR is 0.77 in the far distal part, yes, right? right? And just above the stand uh, areas, what about the FFR over there? 0.82. 0.82. Yeah. So would you explain, you know, which region would be a little bit tighter yes. uh, from the concept of FFR? Would you explain that one? Yes, the usual, uh, usually the pressure wire pullback, so big delta, uh, big delta, big delta means the more functionally significant region. In this case, mm -hmm. uh, distal region, Delta is uh, less than seven, one. Seven. Yeah, but the proximal part, the delta is almost point oh, uh, uh, eight point two. two. So the proximal delta is bigger than distal delta. So the All we right. can guess the proximal region is more functionally se severe than distal region. All right, great. So do you compare with uh, yeah, difference difference of uh, uh, distal to the proximal? You know, after yeah. for value itself, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Proximal is greater than the distal part point, the difference 0 0.18, right? Yeah, right. And the distal part is 0 0.15. So uh, first part, uh, the, the delta FFR difference is 0 0.18. It will be bigger than the distal part. The reason why. Also, what would you do that? So the, actually, I, I, I extensive uh, the ST depression is a very rare case. The, uh, so the, I, I suggest, uh, I uh, I assume that uh, very uh, very uh, very tight stenosis at the proximal portion of coronary artery disease mm -hmm. can make the treatment test state to strong positive. So the uh, pressure wire pullback the by FFR show that the proximal lesion is functionally more significant. Treatment test show that uh, stage two positive. So mm -hmm. these two findings is. Uh, uh, consistently showing that the uh, proximal LAD lesion would be the culprit for patient symptom. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah. I like to perform the uh, proximal stent, uh, proximal uh, left main to LAD stenting. But another consideration is uh, high diagonal branch. High diagonal mm -hmm. branch is not so small. So the, their circumflex is very small. So I think the high diagonal uh, Maybe the mm -hmm. another cell complex branch. So the, I like to save the cell complex as well. Would you so show you, us uh, moving pictures here next. in the screen? Yes. So just the uh, fixed one. Okay, great, great. Uh, you know, previous one, spider. All right, great. So size-wise, uh, big diagonal branches. Is how much is it? How big it is? Angiography not so big to five, less mm -hmm. than to five, but uh, oh, we have to evaluate IVOS because uh, really? IVOS shows that the more the accurate sizing. But before mm -hmm. uh, diagonal IVOS, uh, I'd like to see the LAD IVOS first. Sure. So Dr. Lan, is guiding catheter seven French? A French guiding catheter. French. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, okay. <laughs> we like the bigger one, right? Here mm -hmm. is the Ten. Mm -hmm. Stand on, very you know, good enough. Yeah. Three oh. Stand. 
Wednesday is very fine. Mm -hmm. Expansion is very nice. Yeah. Oh, still inside is good. Perfect, yes. right? Perfect. Oh, what's this? It looks like thrombus. So oh. ruptures. Right, edgy dissection were some. Mm, no, here is the inside of a stand. Mm -hmm. Still? Yeah. Here is the uh, outside of a stand. Outside of a stand. Diagonal is coming from 1 o'clock. Oh, oh encircling. Calcium. Oh, very tight classification. Very tight as well. This. Almost uh, 360 degrees, it's almost uh, encircling. Alright. So there's oh. a question from the audience about the how old is the LED stand? I think it's eight years ago, right? How old is it? How old is the stand? Stem. Previous one. Eight. I took, uh, eight, uh, eight years ago we did the eight stand. Eight years ago, right. Wow. So a small comment. It's quite interesting that if you look at the angiogram, you don't really appreciate that much calcium, and yet the iris is showing you almost a 360 degree ring of calcium. And that just shows how important Test. imaging is to Test. understand the uh, morphology for you. Go ahead and start fixing things. Actually, right. patient complain chest pain. Maybe there's some mm. thrombus here. Mm -hmm. right. Inflation. 10. 10. 10. 12. 13. 12, 14. 14. Deflation. What's the ACT now? I want to check the ACT as well. Yes, okay, I will check the ACT. Mm -hmm. Ready? Wire, keep the wire mm -hmm. down, please. Ready? Ready. Okay, Ready. Great. Okay. Getting better. Mm -hmm. Test. Test. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. Are you planning to IBUS the diagonal also, or? Mm. Yes. Diagonal IBUS. Is the previous IBUS is uh, the pre-interventional IBUS? Yes, pre-interventional IBUS. So the this is very unexpected findings that the uh, coronary angiogram looking very fine, but I was sure that uh, some thrombus inside of a stand. So, uh, so would, you show, would you show us again? Uh, yeah. Can you see the thrombus okay. limb? So thrombus. You... Okay, just a bit. That one? Yeah. All right, all right. Looks, yeah. look like, uh, you know, thrombus. And a little further. Run, please. Setting. Play. No. All right, all right. Okay. Thrombus. Thrombus. Yes, here, mm -hmm. long please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. More than 80 percent thrombus, right? Almost yeah. uh, some yeah. shot of that. So you uh, dilate thrombus, yeah. showering, showering all <laughs> to the distal part. <laughs> all mm -hmm. right. Maybe. Anyway, so, the, yeah, that is strong. So, I like to evaluate the IBUS mm -hmm. for diagonal branch. Long, please. Diagonal branch, yeah. yeah this is diagonal branch. Great. That's a size to five. Bigger than we expected, right? Yeah, right. Here it's almost two three. five. Is quite enough. 
almost a three oh. Mm, it's a big one, almost real. Yeah. And all right. Continue twin circle camera scenario. So great. So the my strategy is to send technique to mm. save the heart a very big high diagonal branch and then mm -hmm. uh, anatomically proximal AD but the fun I think a functional left main bifurcation. Okay. So, so what would you do that? The uh, insuffering calcium or what? Uh, uh, I need the high pressure balloon dilatation high first. High pressure balloon first. Yeah. So the, give me the, uh, what is the vessel size? Mm, the proximal size. AD. Highly calcified lesion. Highly classified lesion. Lesion okay, side. Here. Minimum lumen diameter. Okay, two four. Oh. Even, Please give oh, me right. the 3.5 high pressure balloon. Right, right. So, Dakan, one of the audience recommended using cutting or scoring balloons. So how do you, how do you think about the usefulness uh, of that uh, device? Frankly speaking, I favor the high pressure balloon rather than cutting or scoring balloon. So the uh, I need the high pressure than the blade. So do you have pump wave balloon in Korea? No, no. no. Okay. Yeah. It's a perfect case for short wave balloon. Ah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so sure. What about the size of the uh, balloon? This is 3.5. Okay. Don't compliant? Yeah, non compliant. I think whatever you use, whether it's cutting balloon or high pressure oh. balloon, it's important to re image after. Uh, dilating it to make sure the calcium is Yes, high. calcification is very severe. Yeah. Look at the uh, oh, balloon is not easy to pressing through. Yeah, 35 is too big. Yeah. I think yes. so. Maybe start with the 2.5. Anyway. 2.5 high pressure balloon, please. All right. Even 35 non compliant balloon is very thick, you know, just, just like a, a stand cover things. So, this is in line with uh, Michael's point that you know you could consider using an IVL balloon, but it doesn't track easily. So if a three five non compliant is not going, a shockwave balloon is not likely to go. So in that case, the uh, uh, what size of the uh, uh, shockwave balloon? Use the smaller or? No, you want to size it one is to one. So 20, if it's a three five vessel, you would take a three five. 20, 24, 28, 8. But you sometimes have to pre dilate to get it there. Right. All right. This is a 28. Yes, 25, 28. Okay. 28, 0.7. 28. You have to dilate it a little bit further distance, just to push yeah, up the uh, about stand area, right? Yeah. More push in. All right, great, great. I pressure. 20. 20? 28. 28? Yeah, deflation. What about the, is, is there still some yes. indentation over there? Yes. yes. I yeah. need a bigger balloon. All right. So, all right, there are encircling calciums. There are yeah. many choice, right? Cutting, you know, and uh, yeah. some uh, uh, rhizotropies. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, actually, we don't have any data yet. So, however, uh, just high pressure balloon inflation, it it works, uh, right? Still, we try to force non component balloon first. Dr. what do, what do you think? Yes, uh, uh, I have the same idea that uh, non component balloon first would be the, the safe and effective way. For mm -hmm. the classified legion. So you change the bigger balloon? Yes. Well, I think uh, one thing for the audience to understand is that you know it is okay to take these balloons to very high pressure. People are often afraid, and it's okay to take it as long as the balloon is not bigger than the vessel. You won't perforate. Uh, if you go to 28 mm -hmm. atmospheres, it will be 35. Oh, you change the 35? Yes. All right. Because B. So after high pressure balloon, I like to check the divers. 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. I just mentioned that the, it is so no matter what you use for this, you know, cracking up out the calcified lesion. So you should confirm that the calcium calcium ring is there's a crack and the it's fully dilated. So you know some you know oh. beginner just balloon you and make it fine and putting stent and the patient is in trouble and the operator in trouble. Yeah, right. Anyway, this case illustrates how important is the imaging, intravascular imaging before the procedure so that the, we found the thrombus there and the encircling calcium right. there. And the, Dr. Al also checked the vessel size at the point mm -hmm. of the encircling calcium, mm -hmm. so which make the procedure much safer and the pre-planning is right. more effective. So Dr. Al, what did you do there? This is 35 balloon. Okay. Okay, 10, 10, Good. 5, yes, 10, 10, 12, 30, 14, 12, 30, 14, 18, 18 20, it 20, works. 20. Right? Yes. Disappear the indentation. Deflation. 3, 5 works. 14, 14, 16, 18, 18, 20, 20, 24, 4. Deflation. Twenty. Twenty. Almost twenty. Very proximal part. Four. Here. Deflation. Two. Okay. Okay. okay, smoothly go and force to enforce. Mm -hmm. And then I like to check the IVUS to see the how break, how much break the classification. Mm -hmm. What about the angel force? Okay, just a moment. Guiding yeah, guide come there, right? Right. Down a wire machine. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. Great. Big dissection. All right. All right. However, the star part is already stented area, yeah. so we don't too much worry about that one. So August? Yes, I All like wires. It. I like to insert. I'm 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 inserting the I, I was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Long, yeah. please. Folks, no part. Wait. The narrowing. Keep, keep. Why are you from? Okay, classification break that the tail. All right. Yeah. Right. Okay. sections from the one of three o'clock. Okay. Three. So please give me the two five balloon, two five high pressure balloon. Four. 
Yes, right. All right. Sorry, Mr. Sir. Yes, 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 sir. Six, 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 eight, eight, ten, ten. No indentation. Uh, maybe here is in the balloon. So you're gonna push it in a little further. Deflation. Don't complain, balloon. Yes. Okay. Okay. Six. Again. Six. Six. A, A, ten, ten, twelve, twelve, yeah. fourteen. Push it in in the guider a little bit further. Uh, during the inf yeah, all right, great balloon inflation balloon and then uh, balloon in. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. No indentation. Okay, deflation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Are you going to be doing a mini crush or? Uh, yes, mini crush. BK crush. Mini, mini crush. crush. Okay. Ready? Ready. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. Two five. Two five. Right. Two five. Five section. Five two section. Five, five six. Stand. I don't know, LED, right? 28. 28? Yeah. yeah. For the power branches? Yes. All right. For particular this situation, keep the wire is very important, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, both sides, some um, there is dissection. And high pressure. Keep the wires. Um, rewiring is usually difficult to... Frankly speaking, I think this is not that difficult case initially. After I was oh, evaluation, right. everything. Well, you see the calcium. Yeah, yeah, everything has been uh, changed. Right. Alone in. Oh, please All give right. me the new one, please. Thirty-five, new one. What would you do that? So balloon in LED force, right? Yes, right. Mm, all right. There are maybe some A French guy there. Yes. Mm. So, Doctor Jaffrey, so you just <coughs> asked about the what kind of the. A crush technique. So in Singapore, is DK crush common instead of the balloon or the mini crush classic? I think it's a, it's a toss between DK crush and Stop. pull out. There are a lot of people stand, who like the stand. pull out. Uh, I personally like the DK crush. It's a lot more steps though, and so that's the downside of it. Uh, but the, but it does work very well. The wiring would be uh, much. Uh, easier, mm. second environment. Yeah. So, yeah, I like the DK crushes. I think for the audience, it's important to always remember that the side branch you have to make sure you've opened it up well okay. before you embark on any two stem strategy. And you can see over here, he fully Test dilated him. the side branch. And, uh, and that you'll get a good result. Setting the tower bridge first. Okay. What size? Two five. Two five twenty eight yeah. millimeters. Yes, right. <clears throat> Six. 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 Nominal. Takes time. You have to wait. Yeah. For a while. Deflation. Ten. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. 
Defolation. Re 14. 14. 26, sir. 14. What's that part? Yes. Defolation. I think this this is uh, the one of the most important part when you do a a balloon crush because that mm -hmm. is very important oh, to oh, right. you want to do open it, uh, the proximal part before mm -hmm. crushing. One thing, uh, Dr. Koo, that I found is that sometimes, you know, once you dilate it with the stent balloon, I will sometimes take an NC balloon and dilate before crushing the stent, just to make sure that I've opened up the ostium. Right, so if you are doubtful about the full optimization and full dilatation at the ostium, so that I think that the, that is another solution for the mm -hmm. limitation. 24. 24. 24. 24, 25? Yes, deflation. That's non-compliant balloon? Compli uh, non balloon. Mm. I think it's also important when you crush the stent to make sure the balloon is one-to-one -one size to the main vessel. So if it's a 3-5 vessel, you take a 3-5 balloon. So in the left main, sometimes you have to do two crushes, uh, one size to the Ready? Ready? Uh, distal main branch and then another larger balloon size to the left main. Uh, okay. It's called a hot crush. Yeah. All right, so that is very, very important, especially when the stand? operator is doing the DK crush. Unless hmm? there's a complete crush of the side branch stent, the rewire will be a big, big burden. There are some, you know, hedginess in the yeah. proximal part of the diagonal branches. What do you say? On the on the expansion were some protruding some tissue over there i think it's protruding tissue something all right yeah so floor is good so what is next stand implantation for the stand for the ad yes and the main functional yes. main yes right. what size for all four oh. Lens? 22. Yeah. Test. Test. Okay. Test. Test. Okay. Inflation. <coughs> Inflation. 12. 12. 12. Great. Depolation. Depolation. Stand is fully expanded. Okay. Twelve. 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 Yes. This balloon crush first before the depolation. All right. So you <coughs> and deploy the stand here. So we wanna see that what's happened, the bifurcating area. Twelve. Kind of a part, right? Yes. Right. Not non compliant balloon is however yeah. what pressure? Four, 14. 4.2. Four point one. Mm. Great. <clears throat> So there's a one question from the audience that you, while you do a balloon Ready. crush, Ready. is it mandatory to use non-compliant balloon or semi-compliant balloon? Uh, when? So when you crush the balloon. stent. Uh, I, I favor the uh, non-compliant balloon because uh, the uh, a very uh, uh, to uh, what is that? To make a cross, a cross area is a very compact. I think the uh, making the cross area very compact. I think high pressure balloon is better than compliant balloon. Why, yes. please? <coughs> there is Anyone some high hazeness. The, yeah. Some radio still loosened area, the proximal yeah. diagonal branching. So you gonna do the wiring and look at what happens. Yes. You wanna see that? Okay. Okay. Dr. Han, yes. 
You want to move second Caleb and then uh, we'll be back again, right? Okay. Okay, Dogba, can you hear me? Okay, can you hear All right. us? All right. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for joining the 2021 Conflex uh, right. PCI meeting. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not a recorded case. This is a real live case demonstration in the Seoul and Japan. It's at 12 uh, 19 uh, p.m. and uh, uh, Singapore mm -hmm. and Hong Kong, Taiwan is 11 approximately a.m. and mm -hmm. India is 9 a.m. Is it right? <laughs> so, <Ooh>. so, <laughs> and uh, oh, you have a good memory. <laughs> you know, so oh, very this, exciting, real time. Right? Yes, uh, this is a real time right? rival, really. Yes. Yeah, so, right. and uh, <laughs> this session is a very interesting session, imaging and physiology session. We prepared a very wonderful case uh, that is a very nice demonstration for imi imi imaging and physiology. How can you do in the guided PCI? So, uh, I'm going to introduce and, uh, Dr. Kang, Professor Kang. And the first operator and the uh, assistant is the Dr. Dr. Gosadi from the Saudi Arabia International Fellow. Okay, Dr. Gang, can you explain the patient background? Oh, yes, the patient is a 60-year-old male, referred for in Fort Angina. He treated with PCI several times before, and recently he had aggravated angina, despite of anti-angina medications, including beta blocker, calcium channel blockers. He received 20 years ago LAD and circumflex stenting, and last year, just one year ago, because of the LAD and circumflex ISR, implanted one more stent. And then next year, uh, he also implanted RCA stenting and another stenting for the ISR. Next. And he has a his, uh, risk factor of hyperlipidemia. Next. And ECG was okay, normal science rhythm. Next. And chest X-ray is in normal range. Next. And his echocardiogram showed the normal fraction with the world motion abnormalities in the LA territory, the apex. And we checked the coronary angio. Next, let's see the RCA. Those previous stent, there is two stents overlap, and it was patent, and there was some intermediate region at the proximal and mid RCA. Next, and we also checked the LAD. Oh, it looks not so severe. And Proximal AD and left main, and proximal circumflex has some intermediate disease. Next. And in cranial view, you can see some intermediate stenosis of the left main and proximal AD. And stent is patent, and distal LAD also looks okay. Next. This is spider view. You can see some stenosis of the circumflex, and a very ambiguous regions in the proximal AD. This is the coronary angiography of the, this patient. Okay, could you show us today's coronary angio? Okay, the, this is the uh, epicoral view, and uh, if I'm gonna summarize this patient, the 60 year relatively uh, young patient, and uh, had no diabetics, and received the, uh, several the stenting yes. one year ago, and the prox suck, and the uh, mid uh, prox LAD underwent the stenting and RSR. Yeah. Also, RCA was a stented, and RCA FFR is okay. So at this moment, we will have some discussion time. We checked all FFR in the SOC LAD. Also, we already checked the imaging in the LAD mm -hmm. and uh, mm. the SOC. We know everything. So, mm -hmm. and at this moment, we will discuss the, with the discussant and the panel at the three stage and the before FFR and imaging. At this moment, how do you do that? That was yeah. the first stage. And then Where we checked the FFR, and we know mm -hmm. some value. The how do you do that? That was the second stage. Finally, we also checked the imaging, and we know some in the lumen area, and there was some final stage. And the, mm -hmm. how can you the decide the decision making? That was a very you know, useful and helpful uh, decision making process uh, with and without the imaging and physiology assessment. So I will have some discussion time at this moment. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, so Great. that the dog bug is now t testing us, right? So <laughs> although we are in the we know, we know yeah. everything. We know the answer. <laughs> yeah, the okay, so it that, looked that. like, uh, you know, typical intermediate stenosis. Uh, yes. In particular, LAD main is not too much significant stenosis over there. Circumflex osteum and 50 60 percent. What do you think, Dr. Gu? So, I would say that the it's a real you know intermediate left main disease, <laughs> right. and the so I, I would also start the measurement of FFR first. 
And there's mm -hmm. a possibility that the FFR in LAD is lower than circumflex FFR. Mm -hmm. And there's a diffuse step up at the distal to proximal. And there's some additional step up at the distal left main. Mm -hmm. And the circumflex yeah. would be, I Whoa. would say, a little bit borderline, mm -hmm. around 0 0.78 or so. But the, there should be some mm -hmm. big step up at the proximal uh, circumflex ostium to the left main. Mm -hmm. Great. So, what's your so, answer? You know, some after singing the just coronary angiogram is, uh, I mm. guess um, many the interventional cardiologists just leave it alone. It's a poor medication. This patient received the poor antiangiogram medication, beta blocker, ARB, calcium channel blocker, and nitroglycerin. However, he complained the effort, minimal effort to late chest pain. We should do something. So at this moment, we checked FFR. Okay, Dr. Gang, can you yeah. explain the FFR value? Let's look at the, the FFR and LAD. first RCA. at the RCA. Yeah. We check the RCA with the FFR and RFR. Can you please show the, yes, the, can you please show the image of the FFR? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, this is the Abbott machine, so we also use the RFR, the resting full cycle ratio. And the resting value was 0 0.97. And after adenosine injection, the FFR value was 0 0.85. And also, there was some minimal step ups and major step up at the back proximal. But FFR and also resting ratio negative, so we decided to defer the RCA. And next, yeah, can you please show the third LAD run? Yeah. We also yeah. checked the LAD next and step. circumflex physiology. And LAD, okay. at the distal LAD, the RFR was 0 0.85, a positive finding. And after adenosine injection, the value, FFR value was 0 0.71. As Dr. Gu mentioned, there was gradual step up at the distal to proximal LAD. And then mm. there was overall step up at the very proximal and the left main. And also check the circumflex. Circumflex RFR was 0 0.84 significantly low, and the FFR was 0 0.7. And there was a little bit lower than Dr. Ku expected. And there was also major step up at the very proximal circumflex mm. and left main. This is the result of the physiology. Yes, and the suck from left main 0 0.71, the LAD to left main 0 0.70. That, this is the second stage. What would you do that? We also check the imaging. Before imaging evaluation is uh, at this moment, angiographically ambiguous, is intermediate, but patient complain recurrent chest pain, FFR in both branch is uh, 0 0.71 suck and LAD 0 0.70. So, and uh, any, any comment or some suggestion? So looking at the coronary angio-RAO coral view, we cannot exactly understand why FFR is too much compromised in the suck. Uh -huh. Looks like just ambiguous. Uh, intermediate region. Okay, we have to treat them. <laughs> <Those are models. laughs> so yeah. the reason why treat or not treat, yes, yes. you know, based on their FFR. FFR. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Great. okay, uh, we so, already checked the IBUS and uh, yeah, after yeah. singing mm -hmm. the IBUS uh, evaluation, you fully understand yeah, why yeah. FFR value was uh, yeah. dropped mm -hmm. uh, 0.71. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this you, is the I proof from, LAD? from the LAD. LAD? Yeah. Uh -huh. Cranial view, please. All right. Mm. This is the, the HDI views from the LAD. Let's integrate the numbers from the physiology to the images in the, the interface cry imaging. This is the distal edge of the stent. There was two overlap the stent at the 10 years ago and last year. Mm -hmm. And you can see that stent expansion is quite OK. There is some under expansion like here because of the severe perivascular uh, peristent calcification. There's some under expansion, but the lumen is quite reserved. And let's move to proximal. And at the proximal, the stand was very expanded up to 3.0. Stand is yeah. good. Yeah, stand yes. is good. Mm -hmm. And here, the proximal stand edge, you can see that there is pla. And still also, good. yeah, still mm -hmm. okay. Prior stand is yeah. uh, relatively okay. Yes, and so this and is here, a proxy LED. Edge, yeah. Stand was well placed at the manual mild plaque burden. Mm -hmm. And proximal LED is still okay. Mm -hmm. And here, circumflex came in, then 
left distal, distal left lane, lane have the yeah, severe yeah, disease. Yeah, some severe disease. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the and uh, small this is the left main. Yeah, left main also. Okay, we also check the sock. And could you show the sock yeah. image? Feel? Not too much disease. Yeah. <laughs> then this is the complex lung. Mm -hmm. This is a, yeah, the sock. This is the stain. Stain is yeah. okay without significantly narrowing. Here, mid sock complex stand. Also, two layers you can see the old stand and recent mm -hmm. stand. And proximal edge, see, here is the proximal edge of the stand. There's some disease. And, but it's okay. Here, oh, at the very sure. proximal yeah, yeah. stand edge, this is there's severe yeah. disease. Two. Lumen area less than 1.5. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. More very severe oh, than oh. angiography. Also, the, although and the angiographically intermediate region is ibus, the lumen is very tight, the huge plunk, 90% mm -hmm. lumen area is less than 1.5. So at this moment, is, uh, we will have some discussion times. Now, the, recently in the uh, TCT rape breaking trial, FAME3 trial shows the physiology guided uh, PCI was inferior to uh, bypass surgery, and the, so there are many debatable portions. So this case shows combining physiology and imaging the concept, and the, uh, the one of the drawback of the, the, the FAM3 trial, there are some uh, changes of decision-making, just 20% on the, on the basis of uh, FFR. Also, they just used approximately 10% imaging-supported PCI. Yeah. They just uh, uh, totally depending on the FFR guided, just to use a 10% imaging guided PCI. So, and the, the professor, Gu, how do you interpret and the, uh, in FFR FAM3 concept in this patient? Is how do you your thought is uh, most of audience who want to hear the, your the expert thought about mm -hmm. the FAM3 trial and the, this patient decision making? All right. So that the, I agree with your opinion that the so that the if we can simply calculate the you know, syntax score, it's not uh, that high. And uh, even in the FAME 3, score, FAME 3, so intermediate or low syntax score, it's equivocal or the better results with the FFR guided PCI. And one other important issue is that use of ad hoc imaging so that the, the complex triple vessel disease patients with the lots of calcification, 20% CTO, almost 30% bifurcation, that means that the use of IBUS or the OCT definitely will improve the prognosis. So that I fully agree with your opinion that the this can be involved in fame, but the, even considering the fame three trial, that the the decision was very well made according to the physiology and treatment strategy should be determined by the imaging guidance, and then mm -hmm. we can definitely improve the outcome of the PCI. So what did you do there? The, the rock, the yes, w. so and uh, on the basis of the combined the concept of the uh, physiology and the imaging concept and the lumen or suck, uh, prox suck, suck ostium is very tight, FFR was compromised also. Mm -hmm. uh, the added ostium was a very the is a lumen area less than 4.0. Also, FFR was compromised. We finally decided to the uh, two stand technique in the cross technique, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna treat. And this is a 3.5 NC volume in LED part, and uh, this is uh, uh, another the drug luring stand. You didn't do the, this is anchoring. Oh. Right? Oh. Just direct the stand. Okay, okay, this, yes. Go. Mm. Okay, great. Why are you talking to so you got a good laugh. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> then we're going to move to the okay. spider view. Okay. Test. Test. Mm. It's more. More. Yeah. Okay. More Great. standing. Great. Okay. Pretty. Oh, too much. Test. Okay. I think it's uh, too, a little bit further, further in. Okay. All right. Test. You want to make a mini cross, right? Okay. Great. Yeah. Of, uh, we don't we don't Hello. like Hello. A, too much crush. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. Here and test. Testing. So I think this is okay. good. Okay. How much you Enjoy. Okay. Good. 
So and the Okay. You need to come back a bit or a little bit more. Pull, pull okay. the stand, yeah. 0.5 millimeters or something. Okay. Pull the out. Okay. Come on. A little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Help. This is 3.5. The regular stand. Yes. Help. Okay. Say flip. Come the paper. Sixteen. Oops, small part okay. still. Sixteen. Some indentation yes. over there. Eighteen. Eighteen. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. It works. Okay. Three point five NC, please. Uh, Three point five NC. This patient uh, is a decision making. is so co complex, but the procedure itself is uh, very simple. All right. So, yeah. however, conceptually, you know, Dr. Gu explained that one. The LED disease is a very diffuse disease. Mm gradual, you know, decrease FFR, the cell part. However, uh, I think it's a proximal part, it's a big vessel, major part, and so uh, we want to fix proximal part first, and then we may need uh, some, you know, FFR again mm -hmm. after, after the same. And then, uh, so, Dr. Bob, I, I have a question. So, this patient received the PCI the one year ago? That uh, the uh, ISR put another stand or something like that. But uh, what about at that moment uh, the left main disease? Is this the progress or uh, the, the same uh, the angiogram at the one years ago? Uh, just some left main part. Right. Left main was similar, uh, uh, similar. between one year uh, ago uh, uh. and then. But so at that, that means time, like the one years yeah. ago, the patient also has a disease there. But they didn't touch. Yes. Yeah, so we didn't. Okay. The, sure. Yeah, okay. Go. 20, 20. 20. We uh, didn't. Uh, exact, we don't exactly know. But mm. it's, uh, at, at that time in another hospital, I guess uh, they didn't check the, test. the imaging the, test. or the physiology. Test. Okay, mm -hmm. test. Okay. okay. That's right. The patient has a recurrent chest pain. Yes, yes. yes. After, after then, the and she complained the recurrent chest okay. pain. Yeah. Even the full enzymal medication. Okay, go. Okay, yeah. you you. All right, you did heart pressure inflation, right? Yes, this is uh, NC balloon three point five. Twenty. Three five. And then balloon crush first. Yeah. Okay, Can here is great. Twenty. If you look at the figures, okay. ten figures. I I really like it. It's kind of a minimal crushing. Okay. All right, some you know. Proximal part of stand in each part distal mm -hmm. and proximal a little bit small part is crushing. So I like that mm -hmm. one. So and on the basis and the imaging and physiology and decision making is done and the all procedure is straightforward. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, also the treating the circumflex side branch osteum maximally with mm -hmm. another N C volume before crushing would help mm -hmm. to to rewire yeah, and re balloon. Yes. Across, very helpfully. Okay. This is a 3.5, another resolute. Okay, good. Oh, then, if you like we would you like to Proximal cover part. the left main for. Great. Right. Yes, yes, more. Shallow, slightly array over here. Test. Okay. Test. I think it's good. And the, the you booster, can you can you check the booster? Yeah. Test okay. Test okay. Yeah. Maybe I can ask Dr. Park a question though. Why not DK crush? Uh, what are your thoughts on DK crush? Uh, the decay crush is a little bit uh, in our center <laughs> center, it's a little bit too complex. <laughs> complex. <laughs> <laughs> and we believe that we could get the Comparable outcome <laughs> with this step. The test. Yeah. Okay. I think you're probably right. I noticed that you dilated the circ Austin. Show us a spider view, view, spider view, view please. Spider view. Okay, okay, great, great to see. All right, a little more further. Great. Okay. So let me check yeah. that one. So also part of the main so area. All right, go great. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. 12, 14. Sixty. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Okay. This is uh, a giant. Three point five NC, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, the the pulse of uh, imaging and physiology guided PCI is like this case, and uh, there's a 
unexplained uh, recurrent chest pain. If this patient would uh, salium scan or treadmill, there would be some depression or perfusion defect. And mm -hmm. so it's, uh, during the procedure, I recommend uh, uh, aggressive uh, imi uh, physiology assessment uh, also mm -hmm. and the imaging uh, guided uh, optimization would be essential such like mm -hmm. some very difficult decision making patient this is different five yeah. 18 18 okay save Deple what size this is a 3.5 inch yeah. 25 inch 24 yeah. 26 okay deplete 26. What pressure? Uh, 26. 26. Yes. 26. 26. Kind of, uh, and the ostium uh, size was more okay. than 3.9. 26. Yeah. And okay. Really deep deep part. <laughs> this is nearly 3.8. Yeah. Once again, 26. Uh, 3.8? Yes. Yeah. 3.8. 26. 26. Okay. 26. 26. Okay, so at how? this moment we will check it up the uh, coronary angio and then rewiring. Yes, angio, mm -hmm. please. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Angel. Angel. push up. Okay, Great. looks good. Ooh, wire. Mm -hmm. Angiography very perfect. Yes, wiring. And so, what is the next? The Dr. Gang, would you do a rewiring? Yes, I yes. will rewire. And then yeah. the final the kissing. Final kissing. Yeah, yeah, that is the okay. final step. We'll, do, uh, we'll be back. We'll be back soon. It's after okay. the you know, final okay. uh, final result in the first care lab. Uh, Dr. Han. Yes, I I I already finished All my right. procedure. Great. So Dr. Dr. Lee. Lee, could you show us the current final angiogram and IVUS? Okay. Right. Uh, this Next. is uh, our first uh, our final area coda view. And this is uh, area coda view, and the diagonal mm -hmm. uh, osteum has covered with the stand, and we did the kissing balloon. Can you see the Great. IVUS? So, would you check the IVUS image for the diagonal osteal part? Yeah, this yeah. is the diagonal All IVUS. Right. Great, great. Yeah, What's happened? Uh, Where did you lose an area? Yeah. This is Nothing? The yeah, there Nothing. is. Nothing. You can see the small tissue protrusion to be a clock. Mm, all right. And, yes, and the angle is a very uh, nine degree angle. So angle plus the uh, protrusion make us some haziness in the all right. read, 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 pull back, pull back the imaging, put inside. The meaning is there are some calcification on the circumference, uh, on a diagonal proximal part and overlapping, you know, some yeah. sort of tissue but, protruding yeah. may, you know, influence the radio loosen area, the proximal mm -hmm. diagonal branch, right? So would you would you check the FFR again for LED? Uh, okay, we didn't, but uh, we will perform. Give me the FFR wire. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. All right, right. Anyways, we <laughs> just uh, interest about the proximal part. You have to check FFR again. Visually, very long, you know, uh, intermediate disease, uh, distal part of a stand area. Uh, however, I believe 0.8. Uh, 0 0.79 something right <laughs> all right you have to check and then we will be back after the dr dogu box you know final results dogu so we gon we are our remain the final step final kissing balloon dilation we're going to use the uh to use the uh the engine balloon could you show us the rewiring rewiring Re rewiring part okay rewiring is it Yes, uh, just to take Not a difficult? two second. Uh, three second. <laughs> three second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it, okay. It took some seconds. But it was, was, very, two seconds. was three. very easy to cross. More than 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is NC balloon. This yeah. is 3.5. Which is the NC the, balloon? The, yeah. the two, okay. the LED. Uh, LED. Okay. So, you're gonna do final kissing? This is LED. Mm. Okay, yes, LED balloon is came in. LED. Let's check. LED. Okay. Okay, more. Okay, got it. And then, so. 
And the LED, the use the 3.5, the soft. So this is a use the 3.5. And what size of the circumflex for the circumflex? Okay, this is the 3.5. 3.5, used one. Mm. Anyway, suggestion, another, like, uh, it's exactly not TK crochet, right? Yeah, However, right, right. After, after the circumflex system implantation, you did non compliant uh, high pressure inflation of circumflex sourcing, right? Yes, right. That is the point, I think, is it to uh, yes, more easily pass the wires okay. after the laser stand crossover, right? Okay. This is a used balloon. Okay. okay. There's some damage. We some need wire, some damage. Do you want yeah. 3.5? 3.5. 3.5. Do you want? Uh, okay. Wire was thinking. Okay. 3.5. NC balloon. LED was 3.5. This is new one. 3.5. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we remain the final step. Okay. 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 And okay. this is on a 3.5 NC. Okay. 3.5 NC circumflex. This is circ yeah. uh, 20. 20. Circ 20. Great. This Big is person. overlap part. Okay. Deplete. Proximal circumflex. Okay. 10. 6, 8, 10. 20. Yeah, 22. 20. 22. Okay. Deplete. Final yes. balloon diameter? It's a 20. Uh, 3.75. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3.5. Uh, 3. 20. Yes. Size. About three, uh, three point six. More than three point six. Okay, deflation. Then LED. LED. LED twenty. Twenty. Three point five. Yeah, three point five. Yeah, another three point five. Both branch and C three point five. Deflation. Deflate. Great. Okay, and then. Then. High pressure. Twelve. 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 Okay. Ja. One, two, three. 12, okay. 12. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna check it up the final angel. Yeah, angel. Uh, angel freeze. Yep. Okay. Just okay. And the balloon. Check the angel. So, and the procedure is set. Can you uh, report the left main uh, with a bigger balloon? Good. Oh, we, we, we don't uh, do usually the uh, repart. So, and the uh, you know, if you're gonna check the IBUS, usually lumen area is sufficient, and uh, some expert consensus recommended and we part we don't uh, not fully agree the mm, real great, practical great. the impact of the so, we part. Would you do the IBUS again? Yes. Yes. Angiographically, I think it's yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yes. All right, uh, Doctor Dabu, you you wanna do the FFR for the LED? However, I don't like the FFR for. You so know, I think uh, I think uh, you <laughs> know right. final I would would be okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So there is basically be, uh, diffuse this. Yeah. This is a suck Austin is coming. Yeah. Good. Fixation good. of a proximal part is I think is quite yeah, enough. Yeah. Yeah. Quite enough. Left main point, is right? quite enough. So and the uh, it's a uh, main slightly the two one or two strut is protruded and the suck Austin. Great. And then we're gonna check it up the final angel. All right. All right, okay. almost there. Yeah. Yes. Mm. This is also circumflex part of the circumflex. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, great. Go, go ahead. Perfect, this is the circle right. still. Mm. All right. Okay. Bigger than okay, three good. Old. Yes. Suck Austin, right. just one carina, one short carina. Oh, okay, great. here we will check it up the final angel spiral view and the epicoral view. Yeah, okay, angel. Mm -hmm. Push out. Great. And then All epicoral right. view. Beautiful. Okay. 
Okay, and Joe. Okay. All right. okay. I think it's a perfect case, okay. right? Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, so I think this case is a very uh, nice uh, example for the imaging and physiology guided PCI case. We have mm -hmm. a very uh, hot discussion point, and the final result mm -hmm. is uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Really, thank you for uh, you know nice cases. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great. Okay, Dr. Lee. What about the FFR? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the change to eight, uh, zero point eight six. We can the eight one six. Yeah, yeah, eight six. All right, great, great, great. <laughs> even in the diffuse, it is. All right, you know, fix up the proximal part. Doctor Gu, are you yeah. okay? Yes, I. I this All is right, right, right. I think it's another. Uh, would you show us an angiogram, Doctor Lee? I think it's another perfect cases. You know. Diagonal and LED crossing is finally there are some diffuse digits. This are part of a standing areas. However, FFL is perfectly negative, and so uh, we are satisfied. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Two cases, Dr. Han and Dr. Lee. All right, you want to move lecture sessions, Dr. Gu? Okay, so that the, it's great to have uh, those two very elegant cases, which was done by imaging and physiology, and it's a uh, great time to invite Dr. Jominan for the lecture under the title "Updated Imaging Physiology Guided PCI Tuning 2021." Professor An, please. Thank you very much for a very kind introduction. So the my topic is uh, updated imaging physiology guided PCI tuning in 2021. This year, we have many interesting physiology studies. I like to discuss the, this four uh, studies. Actually, nowadays, pressure measurement for coronary stenosis is a kind of routine uh, pra practice in the contemporary cat lab since the, almost uh, uh, 20 years ago. The, after publication of uh, IFR random trial, so the uh, coronary physiology assessment in, or, or endorsed by the many clinical guidelines, AUC, ESC, Japanese guideline, and American guideline. So let's look at look back to the initial, the very uh, important study, the FAME 1 trial. A uh, nice demonstration that demonstrated that the why FFR is important. They compared the FFR guided versus the ECH guided in patient with multivessel disease. Primary endpoint was just MRP intervention. One year follow up demonstration that the superior. Uh, in the FFR guided groups regarding the primary endpoint death MRP intervention. But uh, look at the, this graph, the uh, most uh, difference occurred in the, uh, within the one week, so maybe the associated with the periprocedural myocardial infarction. Uh, a five-year follow of the critical significance change to the insignificant, even though the, during the five years, uh, used for stand number decreased by, decreased by the 30%, 2.7 in CAG guided PCI group, group and 1.9 in FFR guided uh, PCI groups in multi vessel disease population. More important thing is uh, visual functional mismatching. Diameter stenosis between the 50 and 70%, FFR more than 0.80 is uh, 65%. The, this is, I think this is very important, 72, uh, 72 to 90%, 20% of lesions, FFR is more than 20%. So the angiographically triple vessel disease, true physiological triple vessel disease only 14%, 9% of patient physiologically normal coronary artery. This is a very important concept. I will discuss later about the FAME 3 trial. So we also demonstration that demonstrated that the benefit of FFR guided PCI after routine user FFR primary endpoint death and repeat intervention reduced by 41%, stain used uh, reduced by 29%. No difference regarding death, but the uh, MI difference mostly due to the reduction of periprocedural myocardial infarction and repeat, reduced repeat intervention. So I think the what is the benefit of FFR or IFR measurement in the routine practice, I think, to reduce the number of stent per patient, to avoid unnecessary PCI, and the subsequent decrease the risk of periprocedural MI and urgent repeat revascularization. I think this is a benefit of FFR or IFR measurement in the contemporary 
cath lab. But uh, this year we have four, at least four very interesting studies, uh, positive and negative physiology studies. The first study is a favor three trial uh, presented in the this, this year TCT to uh, this year, TCT favor favor three trial use the QFR instead of direct FFR measurement. QFR is a kind of a combination of coronary imaging and physiology. They uh, it reconstruct the coronary angiogram and considering the frame count and making the numerical FFR value by calculating the CFD system. So QFR probably the same with FFR. Instead of uh, direct pressure measurement, the QFR, uh, they use the QFR for the uh, revascularization guidance. They enrolled the patient, almost 4,000 patients, very large clinical trial. So QFR guided PCI associated with a significant reduction of primary endpoint death MI ischemic driven revascularization. Myocardial infarction, uh, no difference in the death, but the reduction of myocardial infarction uh, mostly due to the periprocedural myocardial infarction, but uh, interestingly, the non-procedural myocardial infarction was also reduced in the uh, QFR group. Also, the ischemic driven revascularization also reduced uh, significantly. So I think a QFR, uh, this is a graph of a QFR primary endpoint. This is very similar to the FAME 1 trial, the first day difference and the diverge at the one year. Even excluding the periprocedural MI, interestingly, favor, favor three China trial, the uh, prime endpoint excluding the periprocedural MI significant at one year. So I think the QFR would be the concept of a combination of imaging and physiology. And so the direct measurement is not easy. QFR would be a one good option. Uh, another interesting trial was a future uh, 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 flower MI trial. So we have a sequential random trial for the complete revascularization in STEMI, uh, pre-multi trial, acute, compare acute trial, the complete trial. Two studies used the uh, CAG guided PCI, one state used the uh, FFR guided PCI. In addition, there is some clinical concern about FFR using acute coronary syndrome. So they compare the uh, FFR guided versus the angel guided in patient with uh, STEMI and multivessel disease for our MI trial. Primary endpoint was death and my unplanned revascularization. At one year, primary endpoint no difference, but the individual endpoint, particularly non fatal MI of unplanned hospitalization, a little uh, numerically higher in patient with the FFR guided group. But I think this is a, a secondary endpoint. It should be used as a hypothesis generation. In addition, more importantly, there is no difference in the death. Even though the, the number was then reduced by 30% in the FFR guided group. So there is no difference in primary endpoint, but we can use less than for patient. This is a, uh, uh, my interpretation for the flower MI trial. Another interesting trial is a future trial. Actually, this, this trial was presented in the five years ago at AHA rape breaking trial. This trial initially tried to enroll 1,700 patients DSMB stopped uh, uh, one, after one year follow because uh, the excess of mortality in FFR group. This year they published the uh, uh, final report one year follow uh, because of a budget, uh, uh, budget problem, they didn't follow up the longer more than one year. One year follow up showed that primary endpoint DSMI stroke on planned hospitalization, no difference between FFR guided group, control group. Uh, look at regarding the death, numerically higher in the FFR group, but the other uh, critical endpoint is through the opposite, the higher in angio guided group, unplanned revascularization also higher in angio guided group. So MACC, no difference. Another interesting point is uh, uh, in patient with uh, underwent PCI, uh, angio guided, FFR guided, the number was 10 per patient, no difference. But even though regarding the treatment strategy, the medical treatment the patient increased two-fold higher in the FFR guided group. Overall, eventually, no difference, but the more patient can be treated by the medically. So the, what is a, a flow MI and future trial? My interpretation is that the no difference in the primary uh, uh, cardiac event, but uh, when we use the FFR in ACS setting in complex uh, daily practice setting, so we can reduce the number of stand and more patients can be treated by the medically.
But the final question is the, the is this kind of differ uh, differ based on the FFR would you be safe? Uh, some pay, uh, some operators may have a concern that the different this lead like, this lead FFR is negative, but the IVs show they're very vulnerable. The rupture, small lumen area, high blood burden, so it is safe. So the, uh, this year. Uh, uh, to answer these questions, we planned a preventive trial. Uh, we finished the patient in normal 1,600 patients this year. So we will plan to present the uh, primary report two years later, the ACC 2023. So the, maybe the uh, preventive trial will answer to the, the most important clinical questions in the clinical imaging and physiology setting. The final, uh, the final study is a FAME3 trial. FAME3 trial compared FFR guided PCI versus bypass surgery. They enrolled 1,500 patients. Oh. Primary endpoint was the one year old post death MI stroke and repeat intervention. Unfortunately, FFR guided PCI uh, yeah, uh, is yeah. uh, not non inferior to the bypass surgery in patients with a trickle vessel disease. Primary, primary endpoint death MI through repeat intervention, non-inferior to PBL is 0.35, failed to show the non-inferior to FFR guided PCI compared to the bypass surgery. Uh, look at the individual endpoint, death MI through repeat intervention, death MI through the statistically insignificant, but the numerically higher in PCI group. Why it happened? Uh, it is very similar result to with uh, the best trial, as they published the best trial. Best trial compared the PCI with the second generation DES, uh, Giants stand with the bypass surgery in multi vessel disease population. This is a five year follow up study published in New England Journal of Medicine. This is a famous, the famous trial, one year outcomes. The famous trial, one year outcomes, very overlapped with the best trial. Why? Why it happened? The look at the uh, PCI procedure, number of lesion FFR uh, percentage lesions of FFR measured is 80%. So 20% of lesions FFR measurement is maybe not necessary because of CTO or very complex, very tight. Among the lesions the FFR measured, the FFR negative lesion 24%. So 80% of lesion, about 80% of lesion already FFR is positive. So FFR measurement did not change the uh, treatment strategy too much. I think this is a very important uh, point of view why FFR guided PCI is not non inferior to bypass surgery in FAME trial. In addition, number of stain is 3.7, very high. Intravascular ultrasound imaging is only 20% use. So only the room for further improvement would be with the imaging guided PCI uh, in the FAME 3 trial. I, I compared the same number, FAME 3 trial, different vessel disease only 3.7. FAME 1 trial, FFR guided group is only 1.9. CAG guided group is 2.7. So I think a FAME 3, FAME, FAME 3 trial in order to complex region to compare the PCI first by place surgery. My interpretation is that the patient with a triple vessel disease really Truly functionally triple vessel disease. Uh, I think based on the FAME 3 trial, FFR, uh, bypass surgery would be the one option. But uh, even though multi vessel disease population, if you measure the FFR, only the 10% of patients have truly triple vessel disease, more patients could be treated by medically. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor, Great. for the excellent presentation. Great job. Any mm. questions, comments from the panels? I think uh, I just have a question. You know, my, my concern with FAME 3 is that uh, the you know, PCI didn't do well. And is it because there were more events in the lesions that were deferred? which uh, we know from FAME2 is usually not the case, or is it just because as Dr. Ahn said that the patients that were treated with PCI probably should have been treated with uh, surgery because they were too complex. And so this bit has not been resolved as far as I know, that were they just because there were more events in the lesions that were deferred by FFR 
or was it just too complex <clears throat> enrollment? Uh, I'm wondering what the panel's thoughts are on that. Dr. Arnold, do you have some comment on that? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, could you explain? Could you explain one more? Sorry, right, just that. My question was that in FAME 3, the PCI arm did poorly. And the question is that, is it because there were more events in legions that were deferred by FFR, which is not what we know from FAME 2? Or was it that, as you said, the patients enrolled were just too complicated to be treated by PCI and they probably should have had surgery? Actually, we need to further subgroup analysis about the default lesion outcome and static lesion outcome. But the, uh, the more than 80% of the lesion, they put the stand in the FAM3 trial. So the default lesion event would be very small, uh, would be very small uh, among the overall event rate. All right, uh, Takhan, so you've shown the, the, the slide, the, the Tony notes data. Actually, angiography vessel disease after the FFR, only 14% of cases would be really, uh, you know, uh, three vessel disease, right? So that That's is right. in, in, in real, real, real point of view, I think it's very much helpful for to measure the FFR. However, a FAM3 study actually, you know, just a 20, 24% uh, FFR guide D4, right? Yeah, so that right. is the very, you know, much different, you know, aspect. And so could you explain that one? Yes, based on the total data, the <clears throat> diameter stenosis is 50 to the 90%. The FFR negative is uh, 20%. Actually, uh, but the inter, uh, intermediate stenosis is uh, 50 to the 70%, and FFR negative is uh, 65%. Mm. So 20% is exactly similar with uh, the different region in FAME 3 trials. So I think mm -hmm. FAME 3, 3 trial investigators did a really good job because they ignored the uh, early treatment studies by angiograph. By they angiograph a lot of money though, right? <laughs> in, 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 in the patient into the, the FAME 3 trial. So mm -hmm. that's why the uh, FAME 3 trial showed a very Sim, exactly similar, exactly same uh, couple of my cover with the best trial. So Dr. Gu, what do you think? So based on the FAME 3 study, as many physicians have some, you know, uh, I'm going to say that it's some kind of, a, you know, noise, some kind of, a, you know, confusion to, you know, use of FFR in the, our practice. So would, you, would you tell us it's basically, uh, you know, the usefulness of FFR still, or what the status would be, or something like that. Right, right. So that the I think that the, these trials, you know, give me at least to me a chance to look back to what I'm doing with the physiology and which population is best candidate for physiologic assessment. Mm -hmm. So uh, I agree mostly with the Dr. An's opinion that the even people say that the flow MI is negative because it couldn't meet the assumption of superiority, but the, if I'm correct, stent number was decreased around 35 or 37%. But the, what, we, what I learned from this trial is that the, if we push the operators to measure FFR in all cases, such as a very complicated lesion where the FFR measurement do not make difference in treatment strategy and in a, quite potentially unstable acute coronary syndrome patients so that the, there may be a chance that the, the patient outcome may not become better with the physiology so that the, mm -hmm. you have to look back all these data and still the, the not still we don't have a kind of a change in our thoughts that the physiology can reduce the number of stents and select the right patients like we've shown in the previous live demonstration. It's very important, but we shouldn't mandate or the, it's not a kind of a cure for all. It's not a, it's a diagnostic tool, not a treatment tool so that we should select the right population where the physiology really works. Michael? I think the other, yeah, the other uh, area that we want to look at in the FAME 3 trial is that you can see that uh, the, 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 there's very uh, low use of uh, imaging. 
And then after the procedure, 60% will be measured the FFR only. And then if you look at the lesion length or the stand length, it's 80 mm then. So there's no way that we know how good the procedure has been performed uh, at the end of the uh, procedure. So I, I don't know whether this contributes 80 mm stand without imaging, with very low use of final FFR to measure the final results, just depending on the angiogram. I don't know whether that would actually account for the increased base rate of this FFR guide PCI patients. I think there are some uh, more data, more in-depth data that we can see whether the maze is related to the stand uh, problem, to the uh, uh, procedure-related um, uh, 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 index procedure uh, or the index vessel stands. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we can understand more of this trial. Great. Dr. Chiang, could you tell us something? All right. All right. Open the sound, sound please. We cannot hear you. All right, great. F FFR guide is important for um, non IRA uh, standard legion and um, uh, just uh, show uh, two two legion for PCI. So FFR guide um, decrease um, um, unnecessary uh, PCI. So um, so I think um, very pretty uh, FFR guide is you can. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Im improve the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, all right, still, any suggestion? Anyway, film three study, I personally, I think, you know, very uh, visually, ha they have already, you know, ischemia, right? Very tight stenosis. There's not too much discrepancies, mismatch between the FFR and, and your, you know, evaluated stenosis. However, uh, just stuck down and the good mention about you know we we in our practice uh you know intervention is that just uh, you know eighty percent stenosis all right that's a significant that is not correct always right that's a point and so fifty two almost eighty eighty five percent there are you know mismatches uh, angiography evaluation FFL is more than half fifty percent we cannot define you know truly the reason is related with the ischemia or not. FFR guided is basically related with ischemia guided procedures, right? If you look at any data, up to recent data, ischemia studies is clearly, uh, you know, ischemic disease, saver angina is, is more conservative, moving to the conservative, the medical disease would be. And so, uh, personally, I think is FFR guided basically ischemia guided for the fame study fame three study they get at a very you know extreme tough three vessel disease they only t4 ffr t4 is 20 24 percent we cannot discriminate with the you know you know influence of ffr efficacy of ffr etc that is my personal you know opinion so all right dr go would you have some comment or close the session here Mike, speak. Uh, I, I cannot hear you. So, All right, I think that the, we learned a lot from the live demonstration and mm -hmm. the wonderful lecture and great discussions about the current status of imaging and physiology. So we cannot say imaging is better, physiology is better, but the problem is that the, how we can adequately apply the physiology mm -hmm. and imaging for the right patients and right situation. So that the, mm -hmm. this is a perfect session to teach us right. how we can apply that concept in our daily practice. So that the, mm -hmm. I thank again, Professor Park for arranging this beautiful course and also mm -hmm. the live demonstrator and the panels and also the active participants for this session. So that the thanks again and I close the session. Have a great day. Bye bye. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all for the joining us.